Hello, my name is David Butler, and I'm going to tell you about a remarkable thing that we all have deep in our brains. A drug cabinet full of the most remarkable pain-killing chemicals. This little cabinet is deep in our brains. This is my picture of the brain here. We'll put a little bit of hair on here, just to orientate yourselves. Deep in our brains, we have areas that work together to produce remarkable pain-killing drugs. I'll draw it as a box for you. And we'll put a big cross on it. Now, if I was to ask you to name the painkillers that you can buy from the pharmacy, you'd probably name Nurofen, Panadol, Panadine. You would also be aware that morphine is a powerful painkiller. But can you name the ones that your own brain makes? For example, you can make opioids like endorphins and enkephalins. You can make serotonin. Your brain can even make morphine. And it's a morphine that's much more powerful than mankind can make. And these are made in this remarkable drug cabinet. How does it work? Well, these chemicals are made and they trickle down the spinal cord. They also trickle up into the brain. Let's look at the spinal cord first. If these painkillers are tripping down into the spinal cord, then impulses coming in from the body, telling your brain about warmth, cold, stretch, danger, can be stopped at the spinal cord. It can stop any impulses coming up. Now that's a great system. That's a great system. So how do we open and how do we close this drug cabinet? Well, the cabinet is under control from various areas up in the brain. And these areas in the brain talk to each other. They weigh up the situation of the world. We say they weigh the world. And they decide if it's worth opening up the drug cabinet. If it's open and the painkillers pour out, there'll be no pain. If it's closed, then impulses can come in and there will be pain. And of course, these areas of brain take their messages from the eyes, from the nose and from the ears. But the key question the brain has to answer to work out whether it's opening up the drug cabinet is simply, is it worth making pain? Is it worth having pain? Is it worth pain? So let me give you some examples. If you run and stub your toe while crossing the road and you have to get out of the way of a car, it often doesn't hurt. It might hurt when you get to the other side, but the brain's made a decision. It's not worth having pain now. Pain can wait. And what it will do will be simply to float and there'll be no pain. Or you may have heard of people finishing a sports event with a severe injury but that person decided it's important for me to finish this game and therefore it's not worth having pain right now. In that example, in that example, open up the cabinet, flooded and impulses get no further than the spinal cord. But it can go the other way too. If you put a pin in a violinist's finger, it hurts more than if you put a pin in a non-violinist's finger. Obviously there's much more of a threat or a challenge if you put it in the violinist's finger and the brain will think, hey, it's worth having pain here. This needs protection. Let's close the box and have more pain. If you're scared about your back, if you're worried about your back, the x-ray doesn't look too good, somebody has said you're in a bit of trouble, there's a lot of degeneration there and you don't understand the meaning of pain, then the brain quite rightly would make a decision, it's worth having pain here. Protection is needed. And of course pain is one of the greatest protective things to make you change behaviour. But I should say, let's be grateful for the man-made drugs too, because at the right time and context they can help, particularly for acute pain or when there's inflammation happening. 
But the key thing is, for any man-made medication to work, it needs to kick in your own internal pain control system. If I was to sum this up, I'll do it with the key. What is the key to opening up the drug cabinet in the brain? To opening it up and flooding so we don't have pain all the time? Well, it's simply understanding. It's having support. It's having knowledge. It's having achievable goals. In particular, it's knowledge. We say that knowledge is the greatest pain liberator of all, particularly knowledge of how your body works.